Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Jem and I'm delighted to be back to our normal schedule. We've got a bit of catching up to do with subscription boxes and things but there's lots of exciting stuff coming just shortly. It is very early in the morning. Yeah, it is 6.52 in the AM, so it's quite a bizarre time for uh, for me to be filming. Uh, but the house is quiet. Mr. Jem got up really early this morning, so I thought, what the hell, do? let's just get up and do it. So just before we get into today's video, I want to talk about the things that are in the stash shop just now. So I've been trying to work away on my acrylic paintings um, that were spurred on by the one of the upcrate prompts. I'm starting to use a mixture now of different acrylic paints. So in the stash shop, I have a selection of the Daler Rowney System 3 acrylic. I really like this because the tubes are a good size, they're not that expensive and they're fairly easy to work with but these paints seem to have a little bit of structure towards them. I do, I have this thing about acrylic and I think it's a really underrated medium because it's so so forgiving and see if you make a mistake you can paint over it and you don't need to mess about with water and all the rest of it. I'm particularly fond of this colour here which is the purple. This is very similar to the Liquitex soft body paint that came in that upgrade that I was talking about. Also in the interest of exploring different types of art supplies. I have a couple of these sets of the Derwent watercolour collections. Now these have been quite popular in the shop in the past and I like them because it's really good if you're just curious, if you're a bit nosy. Within these sets you get six of the ink tense blocks, so these are quite like the ink tense pencils but obviously they're a bit bigger. In addition you get a selection of ink tense pencils and there's also watercolour pencils in there all from Derwent. Right, enough of that, let's get on to the good stuff. I do not know whether to be excited or terrified of this box because when I look at this box, I see lots of pencil marks and obviously, woo, yay, pencils, gem. However, there are lots of human portraits on the front and I do not draw humans, it's not something I enjoy doing. But I absolutely love the Artful boxes. Artful come from the parent company Oh Dear and this is a quarterly subscription box from the UK. So you get a box every three months. I really like this format. Obviously it's more expensive than a monthly box, but when you the, when you divide the cost out over three months, they're actually very reasonably priced. And the sheer amount of inspiration, tutorials and just stuff that's in these boxes is more than enough to get you through three months. Oh no, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Try from this side. <sighs> regular new content through uh, through their website but also through the various social media channels as well. You can also get an upgrade for these boxes as well so if you enjoy the original box they do a separate one that adds on to the supplies that are already here and you can purchase that separately and they're usually really good value as well. And they, it says we'll share your work. Artful are incredibly good. If you uh, post things on their Instagram, then they're, they share people's art all the time. So really nice to get a bit of recognition there. I always love the presentation of these boxes as well. Look how nice this is. It's like, oh, that's, pe that's pencils and there's pencils, yay! <laughs> okay, uh, right, let's see what else we've got. Ooh. So I'm assuming that this is our print. I don't know whether that's Suri or Furi. Uh, right, okay, we'll have to look into that. Right, let's see what we've got here. Oh, this is our drawing surface. Okay, this is a premium artist sketch pad. As with most of the supplies that come in the Artful box, it is their own brand. Their paper's pretty good and they do lots of different types of paper. We have not had this paper before, I do not think. Uh, this is a premium artist sketch pad. So it's 160 GSM, smooth. And, oh, that's smooth. Oh, I'm not really keen on smooth paper for pencil, but okay. 40 sheets, and it says suitable for pencil, pen, calligraphy, pastel, and oil pastel. Oh, it is smooth. Uh, yeah, this is a, just a standard artist pad. I do like that we get it in A4 format as well. With a lot of the other subscription boxes, the boxes are smaller, so we tend to be restricted to A5, which is half of an A4 sheet. As always as well, they give us um, a selection of their blank greetings cards. Oh dear, the, the parent company originally started with greetings cards, so it makes sense that they give us these. And uh, they're very, very good quality. And as I've said before, for some of the other Artful unboxings, they're really handy. See, if you forget someone's birthday or you live in a rural area like me and it's not the easiest thing to get to a shop really really handy uh this is a swatch chart 
<laughs> yeah, artful colour chart. So this is for you to swatch out your pencils. Also a big advocate of the swatching process before you start a piece of art. Even if you're really, really familiar with your, your supplies, in this case it's coloured pencils, I think these are really handy to have, even just to sort of splat out different ideas about what colours go well together. We've got a dinky artful ruler, a 20 centimetre ruler, that's a really odd length for a, a ruler. Uh, normally, well in the UK anyway, it might be different everywhere else, but in the UK it's usually a 15 centimetre ruler. So those are the ones that be that size and those are the ones you would put in your pencil case at school. Um, or a 30 centimetre ruler. So at 20 is quite odd, it is metal. Again, really high quality, lovely markings and we have, uh, we have measurements in centimetres but also in inches and they have quarter inch, they actually have eighth inch intervals which is really nice as well but that's that's pretty, that's pretty swanky, I quite like that. Um, I'm weirdly attached to the, the little copper derwent ruler that came in a scroller box at one point. It's a 15 centimetre ruler but it's a slim ruler and I use that all the time so I'm really happy about that. We've got a pencil sharpener. Uh, this has no brand on it and the blades don't have a brand on it as well. These sharpeners are kind of universal um, and you can unscrew the blades here on the top. You can see those two little screws there and you can replace the blades. So even if these blades aren't particularly good, they can be replaced with branded blades and there's a couple of really good brands. Here is our magazine and you can see the thickness of this magazine. This is like absolutely chock full of stuff. Uh, let's learn about colouring pencils and other stuff. Stuff. Okay, so we are coloured pencils, which makes me super happy. We have an artful eraser, which is black, and it's a, it's a fairly little size. It's, uh, it feels quite soft. I'll be interested to see how that performs. And we also have some of the artful pencils. Now, we've had these before in various incarnations. So we have a 6B, a 6H, and an HB. So we have a really hard drafting pencil. Great for clean lines and light lines. Uh, an HB, middle of the road, you know, it's like a school pencil, like a number two pencil, so quite a, quite a good all-rounder. And also we have a 6B, and that is a soft, dark pencil, so great for shading, depth, uh, a little bit of smudging if you're into that kind of thing. So nice selection there across the pencil grades as well. Right, let's take a look at these coloured pencils, I don't know if I can contain myself. Oh, now I did actually, I had a conversation with Jamie Mitchell, who is the, the boss at Artful, a long, long time ago about coloured pencils. And I know that these are these their own brand pencils, so I am really curious. And I think he knows, Jamie, if you're watching, I'm going to be really critical of these. Oh, they look really pretty in the box. Look, they all stand up. That's one thing. Artful are excellent at presenting their product. Um, the packaging is always really robust. It's really good quality. I mean, that's solid. There's not a lot of bend in that. I'm just taking a minute. The first thing's first. They've got this flat top on them. I absolutely detest that. It's just the way that they're manufactured. But oh, now let, let's pick this colour here because this is right on my street. Okay, so we have round barreled pencils and uh, they're pretty smooth. And the I'm assuming that this colour is supposed to match the lead colour, which is something that I always find quite interesting whether it actually matches or not. Um, we have the artful name, we have the colour name, and it looks like we're going to have some fun colour names as well. I'll just get zoomed in a little bit. Uh, this one is called Kingfisher, and it also has a code as well. So if you're more into numbers when you're identifying your pencils, you've got that option there. It feels fairly sturdy. Uh, th this doesn't feel like a massive, chunky diameter pencil. Um, I can't think off the top of my head what it might be, but I'm hoping that they'll tell us in the in the magazine. So we've got a set of 36 pencils here and they look to be reasonable quality. One that's just popped out at me here uh, is this one here and this is Midnight 105 and we've got an off-center core. If I turn that pencil in my hand you can see how much of the lead is exposed here and then when I turn it over it comes way down and that's a sign that the lead isn't centered inside the wood casing. This happens sometimes. It doesn't really affect the performance of the pencil but it's just a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes when you're sharpening them um, and I can see there's one or two that, that I think that's probably the worst one from what I can see. Uh, but that's uh, that's not bad. I would be interested to see what these are supposed to retail at as well, you know, what you would buy them from on the Artful Shop. Okay, so we've got some usual usual suspects. I'll do that that way, is that better? We have, we have a black, coal, we have a white, snow, and we have a small selection of greys. That's not grey gem, this one. 
Nickel and Ash Grey. Now, these looks really similar to me and uh, looking at the cores, this one's actually darker. So it'll be interesting to see how they match up. But we seem to have a nice range of colours. You know, there's a couple of blues and then we've got sort of blue violets into purpley colours, which is really nice as well. So fairly balanced range, I would say. That's quite exciting and I am looking forward to testing these out. And we'll take a look in our magazine and see what's what. Okay, so this is the spiel about Artful and the stuff we talked about earlier. And here is the list of supplies. So the colouring pencils, 36 pencils, a recommended retail price of £45. Okay, so technically these are retailing at £1.25 per pencil, so they are almost in the, in fact they are in the category with Faber-Castell Polychromos, um, almost Prismacolors, so these have been pitched as quite a high-end pencil, so they've, they've got a lot to live up to. An incredibly vibrant selection of oil-based colouring pencils, woo, big up for the oil-based pencils, that makes me instantly happy. We have carefully chosen the colour palette, wide enough for you to use for any of your artistic projects, appreciated. And you can make a range of other shades and hues if you layer up your pencils on top of one another. Oil-based pencils are particularly good for layering and that makes it really easy to mix your colours in terms of creating a new colour. <laughs> right underneath that it says upgrade for an additional 24 colours. Of course, if they're good, of course we're going to get the other 24 colours. So the Artful Graphite Pencils, three additional graphite pencils so you can add to your collection. Yes, we're getting quite the collection of Artful Pencils now. Uh, rough faint light work on your drawing surface. Uh, pencil nibs have different densities for a range of mark making possibilities. The 20 centimetre ruler. Uh, it's incredibly durable and will not bend or warp over time. An indispensable, dependable tool to use when drawing more precise, precise details such as perspective. The eraser, <laughs> there are no mistakes in art, but an eraser is incredibly helpful for rubbing out your construction lines and your composition. Doesn't actually tell us anything about the composition of the eraser itself, which is annoying. I don't know whether this is latex free, I don't know whether it's plastic, I don't know whether it's natural rubber, I know nothing about this. So I would have liked to have had some more information there and I am not paying the recommended retail price of £3.50 for an eraser, no thank you. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything about the sharpener either, um, doesn't tell you what it's made of. It is a two hole sharpener so we've got a... I don't know what is wrong with my autofocus, I, th I think it's uh, like gone on holiday. There we go, yep, yeah, so we've got a two, <laughs> two hole sharpener, we've got a little dinky hole and we've got a bigger hole for wider pencils. I'll try to tilt that in the light, there we go, so you can see it. I would be really tempted to replace these blades and uh, I like the, the M and R blades. I also like the Coom blades as well and all of those, this is like a standard universal sharpener so they will fit in here. The blank greeting cards and envelopes, 280 GSM, uncoated Fedrigoni board, suitable for wet and dry media, slight texture and craft envelopes. Yeah, I've tried this out before which I'm not going to do in this unboxing but the, the cards are quite robust and they will take a bit of water as well. <laughs> uh, the next thing down says, this very magazine. <laughs> Over 100 pages of interviews, tutorials and inspiration. Yes, we know. And we have the A4 uh, art print. Oh, our very own Siri, a double I, Siri, has supplied a signed art print. Okay, so this is a member of staff at Artful. I see it now. I was thinking that was a U with an umlaut, but it's two I's together. And the A5 colour chart, a blank colour chart for you to test your colours and create brilliant colour palettes. Okay. So they talk about the history of pencils here, which obviously, like, I know all about this already, but that's a really interesting read. And they're giving you some basic steps on pressure and shading. How often do I bang on about the pressure that you use when you use a pencil all the time? Oh my god, I'm in my element here. So really, really nice helpful tips here. Shows you the difference between blending and layering and different ways that you can actually make marks on the paper as well as a little bit about hatching down the bottom here. So really helpful techniques. Editor's note, this is Jamie here. <laughs> so they're talking about the upgrade box straight away. I, I can, oh goodness me, there's two. Oh no. Oh no. Oh right, so it's two sets of 12. Tropical colour pencil set. 
so I'm assuming that's going to give you additional bright colours by the looks of things. And a landscape colouring pencil set, which would be your more muted uh, earth tones, I would probably be more interested in that, but you know fine well I'm going to buy both, let's be realistic. Okay, Jessie Lane, emotive and photorealistic, Jessie's work catches your eye. This is absolutely freaking insane. This is this guy's pencil drawing. Look at this. It looks like a freaking photograph. Look at this. Uh, photorealism is really, really difficult in pencil, and this chap has done a fabulous job about it. So there's the interview with him. Even just looking at this inspires me so, so, so much. Like, so much. And I, I'm looking at him here, this photograph. That's a Derwent Light Fast pencil and those are Faber-Castell polychromes in there. This just isn't about his skill with coloured pencil. This is about how he composes his drawings as well. And I mean, the use of light in the likes of this bottom one and this one here is just absolutely fabulous. Jonathan... Empson, Max, a master of coloured, te colourful textured portraits and landscapes. Now there we go, completely different art style, but look how much detail is in that. And th this is why I love coloured pencil, like because we, as as humans, most of us have been picking up coloured pencils since we were tiny, tiny humans, and it's a natural thing for us, and you can do so much with them. And I love all the different planes that he's got here on the face just by scribbling in a few careful lines. Absolutely amazing. And the fact that he's used spring green in the hair, um, you know, in the beard and everything, and it looks great. Oh, busy shot. So this guy uses the layering technique to create different colours. Oh, look at his sketchbook. That's like the funnest sketchbook ever. I wish my sketchbook looked like that. <laughs> One of the questions they've asked him is, how do you select your colour palettes? And now that's interesting to read. Okay, so he's, he's given a sort of overview of how he goes about structuring his portraits. So he's got a little bit of a step by step there. And we're on to Katrina, or it might be Catriona, Katrina or Catriona Chapman. So she makes comics, uh, graphic novels and breathtaking sketchbooks. Oh, she keeps her pencil stumps too. I do that. I've got a little jar that I keep mine in. These are lovely. Look at this. Now here's, this is what I was talking about earlier. I really like textured paper for my coloured pencil. And uh, obviously so does this lady. If you can, you can actually see the texture of the paper. Like I love that feeling of pencil going down on paper like that. It's like my favourite thing. Absolutely fabulous. So a simple street. Katrina walks us through how, to cap how she captures artwork in her sketchbook. So again, a sort of step by step. And I find this really good as someone who is, well, again, cave birthdays just passed. I've been drawing for four years now and so this sort of bare bones step by step is really good for me because I can take these steps and apply them to something that I want to draw not necessarily this particular image making a comic Katrina shows us how she plans her graphic novel work so again more things about processes here if you're into comics or it's something you like to try this would be really helpful so nice and the pictures are so clear as well Meet the team. Every issue we introduce you to a member of the Oh Dear team. This issue we're chatting to Devin. Hi Devin. So he is a content producer, so basically a photographer, videographer and editor for Oh Dear. I really like that as well because I always like to put faces to names. Off to market, Lewis. So Lewis is a regular featured, featured artist here. Uh, Lewis talks us through different techniques used in his artwork. This is so cute. I love the colour palette here. Want more tutorials? Log into your Artful account and check out our public content on YouTube. Uh, their YouTube channel is their older videos. So to begin with, if you are a subscriber, you get access to the, um, all of the videos via their website by logging in and once those boxes have passed they put one or two of them on YouTube so it then becomes available to non-subscribers but it's always a good chunk of time after the box has been released. Okay, here's Lewis here. Uh, Lewis has provided us with several tutorials throughout the magazines over the last little while so he's getting his own little spot this time which is nice and uh, again very distinctive art style like so 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 nice. Okay, so a still life, so another another tutorial here. A <laughs> little still life, the cup with the face on it, oh my god. Ones to follow, this is one of my favourite sections because I like these sort of snippets. And this is just a snapshot of people's Instagram. And uh, they're usually very, very inspiring. Uh, Remington Robinson, who uh, who I have, I have seen before, they make weenie weenie paintings and they use these little um, tiny little tins, they're like old tobacco tins and they make their palette up in here and then paint the picture. Daisy chain, here we go. So simple tutorial step by step here. Lovely, really nice, straightforward. So if you're new to art or you're new to coloured pencil, this is a great place for you to start. 
10% off art supplies and everything else. Oh dear, oh dear indeed. Oh dear for my wallet. Ryan Chadwick. Oh look, he's a handsome chap. He's got a good beard. I do appreciate a good beard. Ryan's work beautifully captures a menagerie of creatures. Oh, now, this style of drawing uh, reminds me very much of uh, like scientific drawings. I have a scientific background, my degree is in bioscience, and this would not look out of place as part of a diagram in a textbook. Oh, look at all those little birdies as well. As someone who likes to draw animals, obviously this appeals to me too. Ryan Chadwick, I like your art. Look barnacles and everything. And here we have Siri or Siri, design team's own resident artistic genius. I love this use of colour and shape. It almost looks as if she's cut out, you know, like I'm like a collage. She's cut out coloured paper, but it's actually coloured pencil. Designing the cover. Well, this says the front cover. I'm assuming it's the magazine. Yeah. And this is also the same as the, as the print. So she's actually talking through the process of how she got to that point. Super cool. I love how insightful they are. You know, Artful are very good at combining like, oh, look, we've got this with, but this is how it was actually done. Zoe Barker, finding beauty in ordinary objects, people and places. Oh, this is really nice as well. Lockdown lane. Oh, this is amazing. All the people that are in their houses doing different things during lockdown. Oh, this is lovely. I really like this. Oh, she, oh she, she makes cakes and things as well. Coloured pencils, great for cakes and biscuits. I don't know why, but it just is. Okay, so inside the back cover here, they talk about their daily drawing challenge. So if you're looking for uh, inspiration, if you're wanting to draw every day, Artful not only provide you with sketchbooks to draw every day, but if you go on to their Instagram, which is at artfulbox, they will give you a prompt every single day to get your creative juices flowing or even if you just have an odd day where you don't know what to draw it's really handy to you know to scroll through and find something that you want to draw and they have lots of inspiration as I said before they do post everyone's stuff that they've submitted so it's really nice for that as well it's well worth it and this is obviously some of the things that people have posted I feel like this time there's a lot more um there's a lot more of this is the this is the process that we went through rather than here's a tutorial for you and I don't know how I feel about that I think they could have had a few more tutorials in there but that is just my opinion right I'm going to get tidied up a little bit here because there's stuff everywhere and uh, we're going to get down to it and test these supplies out righty ho ho so let's start with the graphite pencils I did just sharpen one um, with the sharpener which seems to be working great so off to a good start. Uh, I will try them with the coloured pencils in due course as well. So let's take a look at these graphite pencils really quickly. We'll start with the 6H. So this is the hardest pencil. Oh, come on, autofocus. Oh, we're going to fall out today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is a really hard pencil. So on a light pressure, you can see how tiny the lines are and they're quite faint as well so this is what I would call a drafting pencil and if we start to go back and forth and we start to press harder and harder you can see you're going to get really tight scratchy lines that's what you would expect from this kind of pencil this is meant as a structural pencil you know for outlines under drawings that kind of thing because you're going to get minimal smudge from them as well you can see if I do that there's not a lot happening it's going down on the paper fine you're not going to have any issues with a 6H pencil we'll going down on any type of paper to be honest because it's so hard now if I take the HB as a comparison you can see instantly that is much much darker and that's because it's a little bit softer. HB stands for hard black. And uh, if I start now, there's a light pressure. I'll just get my pencil going there. And the harder I press, you can see how much darker it is, but also how much softer it is as well. And then if I take the 6B, it's going to be like, wow, -ee. So this is, uh, you know, you're heading into really smudgy territory here. So really soft lines that you're going to get. And again, darker again than the... HB but you can see how much of a difference there is there so really good for shading now if I just kind of uh, if I do that across all of them you can see obviously it makes sense the smudgy factor is the highest with the 6B because it's the softest pencil now these seem to be going down great on this paper there is a bit of texture in this paper it is not like marker paper smooth which uh, you would expect again that's what you want from sketching paper because pencils need something to grip the lead so that the, the colour, or in this case the graphite, actually comes off on the paper and makes a good mark. So I'm going to take this eraser now 
and uh, minimal shavings, not bad. Let's try it on the really dark one. And you can see that's taken away the graphite really, really well. We'll have to tidy up some areas here, but it's small enough that we can do that without too much hassle. So as far as in, as in terms of the eraser, that's that's fairly good going, happy with that. It is quite soft. I would have liked if it did a wee bit more structure to it, just when you're actually rubbing with it, it you know, it has a tendency to sort of boing about a wee bit, but that's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a wee bit nervous about this because obviously I, I want to love these coloured pencils because I really like the Artful Supplies and it's making me nervous. So first things first, let's just see how these are going to sharpen. Um, I, all I want to do here is is get rid of this this flat edge on the top of the on the top of the lead. Perfect, absolutely perfect. That's sharpening beautifully. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so nice clean lines. So the lead is firm enough to be able to give us accuracy. Minimal smudging. Right, let's get down to business. Oh, guys, this feels good. Let's see what happens when we start building up some layers. I quite like this colour as well, say midnight. I want to see if we can get some really nice deep colour. Now that can be dependent on the paper as well. You will find on a toothier paper, on a more textured paper, which is my preference, that you will be able to get more layers down. But that's three and we're doing okay so far. Now the idea is to keep a medium pressure here because that lets you build up the layers and any tooth that is on the paper you're not squashing it flat because if you do that you're back to that eye shrink scenario where the pencil's just sliding all over the top. Five. Yeah, that's still building. I think five's maybe maybe the limit here. Um, there's, there's six. Okay, yeah, I, th I think six is about, about as much as you're going to get. There is minimal wear on the tip of this pencil. Can you just see that very slight angle heading up in that direction? And to be fair, um, I was pressing quite hard at the end there, just in this last part here. Colour doesn't of the barrel doesn't quite match the lead. Very, very common. It's difficult to get your paint colours to match the core colour. And uh, that, that's just, it's like an age-old problem. But that colour is quite nice indeed. Oh, I like that. Okay, a sigh of relief. These pencils are nice. I like them. Let's try this bottle green colour. Oh, that's nice as well. Okay, that, that's fairly good. I like this. Okay, um, I'm going to swatch out the rest of these colours and then we're going to do, we're going to look at layering and blending and see how they do with those. Okay, that is all the colours swatched out, so I have a few observations now that I have done that. First of all, the cores in these pencils are a lot softer than I initially anticipated and it became more apparent the more and more pencils that I swatched out. So yeah, these are actually quite soft pencils in terms of being oil-based pencils and it makes them just go down beautifully. Like they're so nice to work with, uh, which is just lovely. Um, they will have a wax content in them. This comes up all the time. An oil-based pencil is usually referred to because it has some sort of oil content rather than oil being the only thing or the majority of the recipe as it were. Um, but these are are, these these are pretty soft for oil pencils. Not ridiculously so, but I imagine that if you use these regularly, you could work through them fairly quickly. So that brings me to my first question. Usually when a product like this is developed, because bearing in mind these are Artful own brand pencils, they have not gone and bought these from a supplier. They, they, they've developed these pencils themselves. It's unlikely that light fast testing has been done on these pencils, but if you're going to charge £45 for a set of 36 pencils, I personally would like to know that there is some degree of UV resistance, but not per perhaps not a light fast rating at this stage, but to know that they are resistant to sunlight is a really, really important thing for anyone that's going to spend that kind of money on pencils. So that is a question that I will have to ask. My second thing that's cropped up from doing this is obviously with these pencils being soft you saw there I had a couple of breakages and it wasn't bad and they sharpened up with the exception of the white they sharpened up first time that's always going to happen with pencils you're always going to get a degree of that but the combination of the softness and the occasional breakage I imagine you could run through these pencils fairly quickly and 
it's back to that same old thing. Like there, there's my white pencil. Let's pick one that I haven't had to sharpen much at all. So there we go. Um, that and that is literally just so that I could get a swatch. So that that's a lot of pencil that's disappeared fairly quickly. If I was going to use these on a regular basis, I would want to have access to open stock. And again, that's a big thing for me for pencils. I am not going to buy a whole set of pencils just to replace one pencil. Now again, with the likes of Artful, because this is a new product for them, it may be the case that open stock will become a available if these pencils are popular and if testing them out is anything to go by they're going to be popular so that is another question that I will also ask as well because that is an absolute deal breaker for me and you know uh, if you've watched any of my other colour pencil reviews you know that one of the main things that makes me actually use the pencils on a regular basis is whether or not that open stock option is available. So onto the actual colours themselves then, I was really impressed with the white pencil. White pencils and sets can be hit or miss and this is just absolutely fabulous. Like that, This is as good as it gets for a white pencil. I may have to do a little comparison with some of the other premium brand whites just to show you. For the rest of the colours, there was a few that I had to label and uh, the... <laughs> These three here, uh, particularly these two, so this is sand and this is sunflower, these are so close together. When you're providing a base set of 36 pencils, we do not need this, especially in an orange colour because Orange is one of the easiest colours to, to make yourself because it's just a bit of red and a bit of yellow. And I've seen this in a lot of pencil sets, so they've wasted an opportunity there to give us a, you know, a, a more unique colour. And I think realistically in a set of 36, even if we just had one of these, that would have been more than enough because we've got this yellow here. Um, and also we've got some reds as well. Along with the same here, Fairy and Cardinal, they're so close together. And unless you are like super, like hyper focused on, on the type of colour, you could easily use these interchangeably and to the naked eye in an artwork or even a colouring page, you're not going to see the difference. Everything else is fairly balanced. And there's only so much you can squeeze into a set of 36 pencils. I personally would have liked more earth tones. There's no real uh, sort of olive green or that are sort of like khaki colour. Uh, we go straight from this green to this sort of light brown colour. So it would, it would have been nice to have seen more earthy tones, but I understand that they've got the, the landscape pack and that's probably going to build on that. So they're trying to encourage you to buy the other set of pencils. So on the whole, reasonably well rounded, bit disappointed in this. I thought they would um I thought they would have picked up on that and realised that. Because in a set of 36 every pencil counts. I really like the um the purple colour and I was quite surprised by this one. This is obviously more of a blue violet colour and this is like more of a, a, a purple purple. Um also as well there's no real like sort of fuchsia colour I suppose. Well we've got this and what's going on here so if you are if you are a, a drawer of flowers, this might just be a bit limited for you. But I think generally their colour choices are good and I was really happy to receive two very different greys, although they look very similar in the barrel colour, they really aren't. And this is the other thing as well, uh, th there are a lot of the barrel colours that, that don't match the leads. I say it's a common problem, it's just one of those things and that's why it's really important to swatch stuff out. I have an entire swatch book um, that I put my pencil swatches in for this very reason. So we want to try some layering and blending here. So the first thing I want to do is try and make an orange just to prove a point. So I've got post box red, that's the other thing I am totally in love with the colour names. I love fun colour names and that's one of the reasons I still like Crayola pencils because they've got the best names. There's a Crayola pencil called Fuzzy Wuzzy, I mean come on. So light layers, really light pressure and to help with that if you hold the pencil further back from the tip that forces you to not press as hard and it's a really good technique when you first start out because a lot of people like have a death grip and they don't realise they're doing it and then do the same with the, the red over the top and if we alternate here and just keep that same pressure don't be tempted to press any harder because I'm telling you now you don't, you don't need to Pencil is probably one of the slowest mediums you can use, notwithstanding waiting for oil paint to dry because that takes forever. But I mean, when you're actually using it, you have to have patience for pencil. 
it's one of those things that some people absolutely love that about pencil and other people absolutely hate about it. I happen to love it. I find it very therapeutic indeed. So, I mean, I can sit, I can go back and forth here for ages. And again, toothier paper, so more textured paper, is better for layering because you will get more layers down, which means you'll get a much more even colour and a much better depth of colour. So what's happening now is I'm starting to get to the, the limit that the paper can take of the pencil, like the number of layers. And that's because the tooth that is there is getting filled up. It's just like filling up, you know, like a jug of water or something. And what then happens is you get to a burnishing stage. So burnishing is like polishing. Now you can burnish with any pencil. Um, you do get colourless burnishers and blenders and it's just basically wax with no pigment in it. And what that does is it just kind of smooshes everything together. So I'm quite satisfied that I have enough pigment down in the paper and I don't think this paper is going to take much more anyway. Um, so what I do for the last layer is, now you absolutely do not do this until you're satisfied that you're where you need to be, but usually with your lightest pencil, you're going to press really hard and go in this scumbling motion, which they talk about in the magazine. So little tight circles and you press down really hard. And what you're doing is you're just smooshing everything together and uh, that lets you get a bit more of a uniform colour. Now, when you're layering pencils, you're not always going to want that. Um, if you wanted that, you would use wax pencils. Um, but it just kind of evens things out. So you can see there... Uh, that, that's taken a bit of a toll on the tip of that pencil. Again, these pencils are quite soft, but nothing nothing catastrophic, nothing drastic. But if I zoom out now and we go up here, oh look, I've got a darker version of what's going on up here. That didn't take me long. And I really want to try this bubble gum colour. This bubble gum colour is really nice. It's not as neony as it looks neony, as it looks on the barrel. Um, it's actually a very pleasant shade of bubble gum pink. So I want to try pink into purple. And I think this, I think, I think, uh, this is plum because the ultramarine was this one here and the, the barrel looks a lot more purpley, purpley or than blue than the actual. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Anyway, right, okay. So when it comes to blending, you're wanting to smoosh two colours together and um, generally for, for a bit of a gradient, that kind of thing. So if we start off again, light pressure, look where I'm holding my pencil and we just bring this in and tail it off and then we'll take our plum and we'll start on this side and we're gonna we're gonna bring them together in a union of love in the middle obviously this works best with colors that are side by side on the color wheel on the color spectrum and um, that's where you're going to get the best blends if you try and do it with other colors you'll still be able to blend them but they can sometimes look a little bit muddy in the middle so it's it's sometimes a good idea to to have a wee think about what colors you're actually using and what you're wanting to achieve so I'm just starting to pull the pink into the purple now, a plum. That's quite interesting. I've got a bit of a thing about plums just now. I go through phases with fruit and I was really into pears for ages and I sickened myself with them. And uh, funnily enough, now I'm onto plums. I do like a good plum. <laughs> now, now, mind's out the gutter, please. Okay, so starting to build this up now and bring this into the middle. And we we'll just go back and forth and do this. Pressed a little bit too hard there with my, my plum at the top part there. That was my fault, that's uh, operator error, not nothing to do with the pencils. But even doing this process, you can see it takes time. I'll press a little bit harder here. And then with the lighter colour again, we can go back. So we're starting to smoosh together what's going on in the middle here. Now I'm at the point where I can't add any more pencil to the paper, we have reached saturation point. And again, you will get different results if you use a more textured paper. I need to stop saying that because you all are going to be like, yeah, Jen, we get it, textured paper pencil. Um, that's not bad for a blend. Uh, just when I was talking about blender pencils there, uh, you get colourless blender pencils. Some people like to use white because it brightens up what's going on there. So I'm just going to do this here and I'm just going to do it in this middle section so that you can see the difference. But if I, if I press hard and squish this down, it smooths out and pushes out the colour and it helps to fill in the gaps in the paper. Now obviously if you use a white pencil it is going to lighten up the colour, that's inevitable and that's why they invented the, the colourless ones which don't lighten things up because there's no pigment in it. But you can see there the difference between that centre section compared to what's going on here. So it's smoothing out your colour. Obviously you'd be a bit more refined than that but I'm just trying to show you the general idea. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Definitely better for layering than blending. I would really like to test these pencils out on different paper. 
Um, I think for sketch paper this is fine. If you're going to do some really detailed, in-depth colour pencil drawing with lots of layers and things, I do think there would be paper that would be better suited. Uh, the quality of the paper is good though and the pencil behaves well on it. And speaking of pencils behaving, I would really like to try these out in conjunction with my Polychromos pencils by Faber-Castell because I think these would play really nice together. Uh, so overall, yes, I like these very much. The only disappointment that I have is this similarity in these colours, which it's too... A set of 36 is too precious to have more or less duplicates like this because the difference between the colours is negligible. Okay, that is a lot to digest. Uh, I knew this, if this was a pencil box, I knew this was going to be quite in-depth because pencils are my thing. They've given us a really great set of tools. The pencils are really good quality, so overall I think this is a good box. I feel that the magazine's a little bit short on techniques and tutorials this time round, but overall I think Artful have done a great job of developing their own pencils. I am going to contact Mr Artful, Mr Jamie Mitchell, and I am going to ask the questions about open stock possibilities and also uh, UV resistance, stroke light fast ratings. And when we come back to this box, because we will be coming back to it to do some artwork, um, I will hopefully have answers to those questions for you. Just really quickly before we finish up, I have pulled out some of the, the sort of higher end white pencils. Um, I don't want to compare apples and pears, but I've got the Derwent Light Fast pencil and I've also got the Caran d'Ache white pencil as well. These are like the Rolls Royce of pencils. They're really, really expensive. The reason is that these are 100% watertight, light fast, like absolutely no chance, you know, like 100, 100 years in museum conditions and all that kind of chat. So I'm not expecting the Artful one to perform to this standard because these pencils, if you buy them open stock, are like twice the price. Um, but it's just for a comparison. I do also have the uh, the Faber-Castell Polychromos that I've been banging on about for the last hour. And also this poor little bugger here. <laughs> this, is the, this is the Prisma colour. So this pencil here, <laughs> this pencil here is a wax-based pencil. Um, so we're going to try those try those out against the artful one so uh, right okay let's start with the let's start with the prisma color i'm going to turn this back around just so that i've got the same so straight away it's definitely keeping up with the prisma color there's no doubt about that and here we have the the polychromos so it's actually yeah it's actually oh, a wee bit brighter these look really similar together the it might just be the camera lens and the white balance, but the, the Prisma colour one is a little bit brighter than the other two. Um, so then we've got the Derwent Light Fast, and uh, you know, th th that two layers, you can see the difference there, that's much, much brighter, but you would hope and expect if you're going to get robbed for a pencil. And here is the Caran Dash Luminance. Now this is a favourite of a lot of people, this one. I actually prefer the Light Fast pencil, um, just because it's me. <laughs> But there you go as well. So you can see a marked difference from these two, but that, that is what I would hope. It's purely just down to the price of them. But the Artful holds it own, holds it, holds its own next to the Polychromos and the Prismacolor one. So that says a lot about the quality and the pigment load in the pencil itself. Let me know down in the comments what you would like to see. Would you like me to do a tutorial from the magazine or do you want to see me do something else with these pencils? All suggestions are welcome. Please feel free to join the conversation down in the comments section. So thank you very much for watching. Please stay safe, take care of each other and normal sh schedule has resumed so I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a great day everyone and bye for now.